Welcome, this is MCG Tech with an answer to the question, does Peltier cooling improve thermals? I would like to start this experiment off by gathering some data on the temperatures of the computer while turned on. By using a thermal gun, I was able to determine that at its hottest, the heatsink was around 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, I decided to push the computer to its limits to test non-Peltier thermals. By using CPU-Z, I can stress the CPU for 10 minutes in order to gain some information about cooling without Peltier. The specs of this system include a Core 2 Duo E7300, 4GB of DDR2, and a Dell 8300GS. Additionally, I would like to credit another YouTuber called Dr. Noob, who also created a Peltier cooler video. I referred to his video a lot when I installed my own Peltier pad. His video will be linked in the description below. Returning back to the CPU stress test, even though the timer I was running on the computer crashed, I was still able to determine when 10 minutes had passed. Once the test was complete, I recorded the data and began preparing for the Peltier cooler installation. The first thing I did with my Peltier pad was insert it into a 12 volt barrel adapter. If you are looking for a more permanent power solution, you can simply attach it to a salvaged Molex cable. Once I powered the Peltier pad, I immediately felt one side get cooler and the other side get extremely hot. Even though the cold side felt cold, the thermal gun read an increase in temperature due to the increasingly hot other side. It was at this point I began to have my doubts in my cooler's ability to dissipate the heat of the hot side. The installation for a Peltier cooler is fairly simple. Start by removing the cooler, then clean off any old thermal paste. Once the thermal paste is removed, begin adding Vaseline to the motherboard area around the socket. The Vaseline is essential in controlling the condensation produced by the Peltier pad from shorting out the motherboard. Once enough Vaseline is applied, add new thermal paste on top of the CPU. Once the Peltier pad is seated properly with the cool side facing the CPU, add another layer of thermal paste and secure the cooler. Make sure to maintain a high level of pressure on the Peltier pad for optimal results. Sadly, my phone battery died during the installation, so the video got cut off. Once the computer turned on and I plugged in the Peltier cooler's power, I was relieved to see that nothing shorted out. To start off, I did read some colder temperatures around the hottest part of the cooler, so I was excited to begin stressing the CPU. I started the test expecting it to take 10 minutes, but once I used my thermal gun and saw the CPU cooler read over 100 degrees, at 5 minutes in, I stopped the test and gathered data to compare. Now that testing is complete, let's take a look at the data. After 10 minutes of stressing the CPU, the non-Peltier cooled CPU had a temperature of 57 degrees Celsius for the first core and 53 degrees Celsius for the second core. The Peltier cooled system was only stressed for 5 minutes but yielded the following results. 74 degrees Celsius for the first core, and 72 degrees Celsius for the second core. So it's conclusion time now. Right now, I cannot recommend Peltier cooling if you have a weak cooler like this one. Considering how theoretically, the better the cooler, the better performance you will get from a Peltier pad, I definitely plan to do more testing in the future, especially considering how these only cost $3 on GearBest. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.